I cruise on over to the Peach Bottom home and knock on that front door. Mr. Peach Bottom lets me in. Come in, Patrick. Min expecting you, Melba, not quite ready yet. Still upstairs. Make yourself to home. Oh, c come in, Min. Might I take your hat? <laughs> I am not wearing a hat, sir. Not wearing a hat. Let me get my glasses. I was just reading over here. <gasps> Patrick, that pompadour is absolutely spectacular in its splendor. <laughs> and I don't believe I've ever seen a tie with hula dancers on it before. <laughs> Very tasteful. Very chic. No, oh, oh, I think that's Melba coming down now. And there she was. The most beautiful girl in that county came floating down those stairs like a delicate pink flower blossom. She was dressed in bobby socks, pedal pushers, and a shimmering white bosom. <laughs> blouse, 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 shimmering white blouse, 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 shimmering white blouse, blouse. I was instantly so drenched in sweat, I was afraid I was going to leave a puddle of it right there on the <laughs> peach bottom floor. I couldn't have been more scared if she'd been a Bengal tiger charging me full tilt with a dinner napkin around her neck. But I, I couldn't move because she was standing on that bottom step as if she were part of some vision. <gasps> Hello, Patrick. I'm sorry I took so long getting ready, a little late. Oh, how silly of me, how, how are you tonight? Melba. <laughs> Patrick, I did not know you spoke a second language. <laughs> Very enterprising, young man. You two have a wonderful night tonight. Mr. Hadden, I'm Mr. Peabottom. Melba, it's such a nice night out. Would you like to walk down to the Pandora? Oh, Patrick, I'm afraid I was a little late and I wouldn't want to miss the beginning of the movie. I think we better ride. Whatever you say, Melba. <laughs> I put a nice feather pillow on the rear fender carrier for you, Melba. It shouldn't be too uncomfortable back there. She didn't seem to mind the bike. Not many parents give their 12-year-old kid a key to the family car. <laughs> I have to admit it was a little difficult getting started with <laughs> both of us on there. <laughs> After a while, I was going along at a pretty good clip. How you doing back there, Melba? Fine. I've had better views, though. <laughs> 
Sorry about that, Melba. I tried to pound down the stupid seat. I was talking about the wrecking yard we were going past. <laughs> Patrick, I never knew you could yodel. <laughs> it came with the bike, Melba. <laughs> what didn't come with the bike was brakes, Melba. <laughs> what I usually do is just hop off and let it crash to a stop. Not tonight, Melba. We're gonna zoom right up to the front door of that movie theater. <laughs> then I'll just drop down on the bar and skid my feet along either side. <laughs> we'll stop. All you gotta do is hang on, Melba. Oh, we're coming up to it, Melba, get ready. Hang on, Melba, here I go. <laughs> Patrick, that yodel was even better than the last one. <laughs> Melba. <laughs> Look like everybody in Blight is at the movie theater that night. Mr. and Mrs. Muldoon are passing by and coming in. Oh, and then I see Bobby Dittmeyer on the arms of Olga Bone Marrow. Ah, and there's my cousin Buck, who's somebody I never seen before. Hi, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Rancid Crabtree. Now I was surprised to see Rancid. I heard tell he was trying to avoid enclosed heated spaces. <laughs> he had a little hatchet in a holster. <laughs> attached to his belt. Uh, I got two tickets and a big box of popcorn for us. Everybody was staring at us, smiling, some of them even laughing. <laughs> Probably because they were so delighted to see me and Melba finally getting together. <laughs> Delbert, the kid behind the popcorn counter, he was so startled to see me out on a date with Melba Peachbottom, he kept making these weird hand signals. <laughs> By the time he came to his senses, he'd squirted enough butter on that popcorn to clog an artery at 40 yards. <laughs> and I looked over and I saw Melba staring at me, looking me up and down. She walked over to where I was and poked me playfully in the side. I smiled knowingly at her. <gasps> and then she came real close got up on her tiptoes and leaned her body against mine, almost stopping my heart. <laughs> she was trying to whisper something, something in my ear. <gasps> Melba. <laughs> what is it you can tell me? Anything. You're fly. <laughs> my fly. What fly is that? <laughs> the fly on your pants. It's wide open. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> the horror of it. My worst nightmare had come true, treacherous fly, evil fly, abominable fly. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Men of genius, Aristotle, Einstein, none of them has ever come up with a graceful way to zip up an open fly in public. 
Are you to, supposed to brush some imaginary lint off a pant leg? And then sneak in a zip? <laughs> Get that dust off that shoe and hope like heck you catch it on the way back up? <laughs> Create a diversion. Hey everybody, fire! Fire! Way up there! <laughs> And forget zipping with casual flair, it just doesn't work. Hi, Bobby, how are you tonight? I thought I'd zip. <laughs> There's nothing to do but zip. Lord, how I hate to zip. But zip I must. So I reached down and I savagely zipped that treacherous fly. Oh, yeah, closed. Yeah. What the? I can't, what? Something's wrong. I can't stand up. I can't. <laughs> I have zipped my tie into my fly. I can't. Say, uh, Melba. <laughs> Would you excuse me for one... One moment. Never has darkness been so appealing. <laughs> <laughs>